there, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch Homestead and today it's all about the bees. So what I'm gonna be doing with my hive today is I'm going to be rearranging the boxes. If you, I don't know if you can see up there, but all the bees are coming in and out through the very top of the hive. And that's because I made a little bit of an error in the fall. Generally, you only have two supers. So supers are those boxes there. You only have two supers, one that has the bees and one that has honey. There's about 60 pounds of honey per super and that's usually what they need to make it through the winter um, here where we are in the north. And I obviously didn't get to that. So the bees were in the bottom, but the way bees operate is they move up in a hive. And so they ate through the honey and now they're probably, um, we're gonna see, but they're likely in the top two boxes there. So I'm gonna take those boxes off, remove any of the empty boxes, and make sure they have room to, to um, store some honey. They do have a little tiny bit of the beginning of a nectar flow happening here with the dandelions. So I, um, yeah, I'm gonna move it around, make sure they have room to store their new stuff. And, ooh, bee just flew in my hair. <laughs> And yeah, so that's sort of the plan for today. I did get a new subscriber yesterday called, let's see, what's her name? The Bee Lady Apiary. Hi there. Um, so if you have any advice for me, because I'm fairly new to this, please let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. So it is a little bit windy today and I apologize for that. My camera, ah, uh, yeah. So my camera is gonna blow around a little bit. I do have something to try to block the wind noise for you guys. So if you see something flapping in front of the, the lens, that's what it is. It's just the sheet that I have. So I'm gonna move this over again a little bit so you, you can see the hive. And so um, a couple of the, the things that we have coming up as far as beekeeping goes is we're gonna be installing eight new nucleus hives. So a nucleus hive generally is made up of a couple frames of bees, a frame of brood, and usually a frame or two of honey. And uh, you buy those in a little package and then you install them in one of these super boxes. So we have eight of those coming in um, in June, which is pretty exciting. We're just, we've decided to expand. We really love working with the bees. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing. We're also gonna be doing honey extraction. I <laughs> hear kids yelling in the background. But anyway, um, we're gonna be doing some honey extraction. We just bought a new extractor, well new to us. It's actually quite an old, extractor but it's a four frame extractor so we can put four in there spin it around normally what i've been doing is actually um, stripping each frame of all the wax and honey which is a huge waste because the bees it's much easier for them to uh, build in comb that already exists so with the extractor you just take the top um, cappings off that's just the top surface of the of the uh, wax i'll hopefully be able to show you guys a few um, little video snippets of that and then you put it in the extractor spin it around and the honey comes out and then you can put those um, Frames back into the hive again the bees will clean them up and then they'll fill them up again So we'll be doing some honey extraction that won't be until into August. That's usually when we pull the honey off the hives um, We'll also be doing some bee management stuff So we'll bring into the hives over the summer and show you what's going on in there and also we did buy a whole bunch of new to us boxes. I know this is a bit of a controversial um, subject using used boxes, but we do know the AP area where these came from and they were clean. So we're gonna be doing some revamping of those, getting them all clean and repainted. And yeah, I guess that's about it. So let's get into that hive. So something that I forgot to mention earlier is that I'm actually terrified of bees terrified, irrationally terrified of bees. So, and that's, I've been this way since I was probably 10. So I'm the type of person that if a bee flies, you know, near me, I run away screaming. It's all very dramatic. So I know it's a little strange that I'm working with bees, but that's one of the reasons that I outfit myself. Unlike a lot of beekeepers who go in barehanded and just wear something on their head or sometimes not even at all, you'll never see me doing that. <laughs> always going to be completely covered head to foot in bee protection and deep breathing the whole entire time I'm working with them it's like an overcoming you know fear thing so it's it's not worked it hasn't overcome the fear but it has oh there's a little bee right there smelling pheromones on me see look see a bee just came near me and I had to like restrain myself from running away so anyway just thought I'd let you guys know that because it's a little bit funny. 
So the first thing that I'm doing wrong, right out, right out of the gate, is I'm wearing a dirty bee suit. So this bee suit I used to pull off, um, so in the hive that died to pull off the honey that was in there. So it's absolutely covered in honey and also pheromones. So bees give off a pheromone, a stress pheromone, when they are stressed out. And that pheromone can get on you. And if you go into a hive with a dirty bee suit like this, it can aggravate the bees. But I don't have time to wash my, <laughs> wash my suit today. And I have time to do this today, so that's what's gonna happen. So I guess we'll just take the chance that I'm gonna get attacked. <laughs> okay. So this is super cool. I'm hoping you're gonna be able to see this, but if you watch those bees really closely, you'll see some bees coming in with orange all over their legs. And that is actually pollen. I'll show you some of the flowers that they're pulling nectar off of, or sorry, <laughs> pollen and nectar off of. Um, but I just thought that was really, really neat. I just came over here and noticed it. Yeah, there you go. Did you see that one with the orange? Oh, bees are so cool. Terrifying, but cool. Okay. So a couple of minutes ago, the bees, <coughs> I had a hole in my rubber boot and the bees got inside my rubber boot and stung me three times on my foot and my leg. So I'll show you later what happens to me when I get stung, but it's, it's like extreme swelling. And then in my fit of running away from the hive, I threw my hive tool and now I can't find it. <laughs> so that's what's happening now. from winter so I'm just cleaning off this bottom board You can see all the bees flying around me. Remember before I was talking about pheromones? So this suit probably was stung a whole bunch of times and there's stress pheromone and you'll just see if I start walking, these bees will follow me. Usually they follow me up to the house and then they head back home again. 
So what I ended up doing up there was to do a rearrange, like I said. There was actually a couple of, I was gonna bring it down to two, but they already had a ton of honey in there and um, some honey left over from last year. So I ended up leaving, as you can see, I ended up leaving four boxes and only taking one off. So, and then rearranging, moving the brood to the bottom and the honey supers to the top. So they are not happy campers and they're trying to figure out where their entrance is. So hopefully they'll get that figured out. They're all trying to fly in the top here. I'll show you, it looks kind of cool. So the reason that I left that box down there was because it's empty but there is a lot of bees left. So if I leave it like that, all the bees will find their way back into the hive again. And when they've cle cleared out from there, I will come and move it. And you can also see down there how I put that little dish with water and some sticks in it. So bees drink water like everybody else. And this way they don't have to fly far. And sometimes when it gets really hot, um, all the puddles dry up. That's where they rely on around here anyways for a lot of their water. So I just keep that there. And interesting fact, but bees in the winter time, how they drink is they actually drink the condensation off of the side and the roof of their beehive. So I always thought that was really cool. Okay, now I have to go get my adrenaline back down again and catch my breath. Oh my gosh, that really scared me. And now my leg's gonna swell up to be twice its normal size. So that should be exciting. Hey, so it's a couple hours um, after I was in the hive earlier today, and I am just going up to check that box. So if you'll remember, I mentioned that that box would be all cleaned off and that there wouldn't be any bees left on it. So let's go check my theory. And I'm also curious to see if they are using the right entrance. So let's go look. Oh, look, I'm so happy. So you can see little bees coming in and out of the right entrance. Yay, that's what I was hoping we could do. And you can also see too, how much calmer the hive is. Everybody's all chilled out now that I've... Oh, I, sh I wanted to mention too, that the reason that I leave these sticks in here is because the bees will drown if they don't have a way to get out. So that's probably obvious, but... And then if you look over here, nice calm hive, and you can see this box and there are no bees left in here. So I'm just gonna put all this back in and move this back down. So I'm feeling a lot better about this now, now that they look all happy and set up and that they're using the right entrance here, I'll film. And actually they're not interested in me at all. Everybody's pretty mellow. They haven't come out and decided to attack me. So that's great, it's really great news. So if you liked this crazy video, please hit that like button, subscribe for more videos. Hopefully not like this one exactly, not as terrifying, but for more videos from us and leave a comment. Thanks so much guys for watching. Bye.